Uh, all right. Steve in Jersey City. What's up, Steve? Hey, Mike. I just uh, I have a couple, two quick questions. But yes. first, I've been with the fans since the beginning. I was a stock boy at the A&P when you guys first started. Now uh, I'm getting uh, set to retire in law enforcement as well. Wow. But my... My my uh, my two questions to you is uh, oh first of all uh, my daughter used to roll her eyes when she was a baby. Daddy talks to uh, listens to those talking guys all the time. Talking that. guys, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, do you have any plans on writing a book? Um, I would say no. I okay. I came close uh, this year. I was going to do one. I actually put in a treatment. I worked on it. Uh, we met. They wanted the book badly. Um, they offered me a very reasonable, uh, advance. I was going to do it. And then we got into the post, uh, stuff about how much post the, uh, post writing of it, of promotion. And I did not feel comfortable that I could meet their demands for appearances, considering everything that was going to go on this fall. I just didn't think I could do it. Uh, I didn't think I could make as many appearances as they wanted me to make. They wanted me to make a lot of appearances and, I just said I just don't think I can do it, so I didn't want to do something just for the money. I don't I don't believe in doing things just for the money. I think it's a mistake when you do it. So I said no, even even though I was interested in doing it. And then I said no. So I think I did the right thing. I don't know that I'll never ever do one. If I if I do one though, I want to do something that's different. Like I don't want to do one of these books like uh, of of different things like lists and stuff like that. Not that I have a problem with those, but I just don't want to do one. And I, I have to come up with something that's different or something that's unique. Like, I'm not going to write a book by myself because I don't think enough people care, and I don't care. So, I mean, I, I, so uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to tell stories out of school. So uh, I'd rather come up with some ideas or stuff that, have, you know, something that would be forward thinking about the future, but I don't, I don't know that they'd be interested in that. The stories I told them that I put in a book they loved, but – you know, I, I told him some good stories, and I put I had some of them written down, but uh, I don't know if I'll ever do it. I really don't. I'd say it's 50-50. Maybe someday. Who knows? You never know. John in Jersey. What's up, John? Hey, Mike. Congratulations on your third Thank you. Thank uh, you. I have a question, but I will first want to share. We had two moments we shared together. One well, was 2009 before Super Bowl Forty Three. I was on a trivia contest for you and Otis Anderson. I was the first winner. And the okay. second one, um, you, uh, we, we hosted the Super Bowl here. You were at the M&M store, and you were doing your show, and you'd walk over to the side and take pictures with people and shake your hands or whatever else. You were, I was there when you did that. The question is, when you were doing that, like, you, you did it during a commercial break. You would, you know, do your show, and then you'd go on your commercial break and go over and talk to the people and sign autographs and everything. How did you ever find time to go to the bathroom? <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I really don't remember, to be honest with you. But, you know, a lot of those shows... In those places are very tough because you do co you do sign autographs every commercial, so you're you're busy for like six straight hours because you sign every commercial you sign an autograph, and it's it, it could get crazy. I tell you, it makes the time go fast, but it's it's a long day. It really is. I mean, that, those days happen, you know. But hey, you know, listen, it's nice enough that people come out. I, the Apple, I mean, the Apple, the uh, M and M store, which I thought was a crazy idea. I admit one thing about it. It was packed every day. So I thought it was a crazy idea to put it in the, in the, in the uh, M&M store. In retrospect, it might not have been because it, I got to admit it was absolutely jammed every day there. And they gave me some M&Ms with my face on them, so uh, the, the kids liked those. So that was that was big. That was, uh, that was like a big deal. Um, Alex in Middletown, what's up, Alex? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, what's happening? Thanks again for the uh, big 3-0. Been listening since day one. Thank you. Uh, quick question: um, When you guys had that event on in November, yes, uh, you uh, somebody at the end of the show was kept bugging you to give out the phone number. Then I thought about. It and I said, you know, I don't think I've ever heard you give the phone number. Never. I was wondering. If, I was wondering if there was anything behind that or what, what the you know what the deal was with that. I never had to give out the phone number. I always had calls. So, okay. I mean, I never had to ask for calls. So okay. I never bothered to give out the phone number. I, I look to my left, and there's always a line of calls up. So I've never given out the phone number. I never have. All right. So, cool. so I fun. think that's what, you know, some people in their, the way they talk about the show, always say the phone number. I mean, it's just part of their deal. It was never part of mine, so I, I never made it about the phone number. Uh, so Steve accused me of not knowing the phone number, but I said it's <laughs> on the wall, so it's not like it's hard to know. It's actually on the wall. So, I mean, it's not. It, it, I wouldn't have to 
go far to learn it. It's right there. Matter of fact, it's written right here on a piece of paper. So does somebody want to hear? Maybe Friday. I will. I will uh, stand here and uh, give the phone number because it's right here in front of me on these big block, red, white, and blue letters right in front of me. So I've never, I, I have never uttered that phone number. I really have never done it. So, um, but that's really the reason. Some of them, some people do it all the time, and you hear them sometimes do it, you know, every hour on the hour, and some of them just do it all the time. Like, Dog was always one to give out the phone number. He always did. So uh, you know, that's his thing. But I've never, I never had to do it, so I never did it. Do you remember the Astoria number? Um, do I remember? The, yeah, we used to have the other number, the old number. Um, do I remember the old number? Um, I don't know if I do anymore. 718-978-6666. That's right, yes. It's always 6666. So 718-93. And before that, we used to have an 800 number in the beginning, you know. But we lost so much money on the 800 number with people holding on for so long, they canceled it. We used to have an 800 number for the first years of the fan. Then we got cheap and we got rid of the 800 number. So we actually had an, an, an 800 number in the beginning. So um, I don't remember what it was, but it was 800, something at 6666. But I don't remember what the other part was. I don't remember. But remember, Mick, when we had an 800 number? Remember that? We used to have an 800 number when we started. Remember that? And they got rid of it because we were losing money. Uh, Rob in Livingston, what's up, Rob? Hey, Mike. Um, I, too, want to congratulate you on 30 years. You, Thank you. You, really set the, you set the standard. You know, for anyone who asked me, you're going to call Mike before he goes off. What are you talking about? I was thinking, and, um, you know, I have two questions for you, both about the Hall of Fame, one about baseball, one about football. You know, we've talked about it over the years. Great. And, you know, growing up, you know, the Hall of Fame was generally, you know, you get a guy like Sutton every now and then, but it was the best of the best. You know, nowadays, you know, with Trammell, with, with uh, Morris to a lesser extent, you know, they're letting the guys that are good, very good maybe, but, you know, it's no longer the Hall of Fame, you know, the best of the best. But what, what do you think about that? I think you happen to be right. Uh, there has been a uh, diluting of the Hall of Fame pool. They have let other people in, so I think you're right about that. I, I think it it should be uh, the, it should be the best of the best. I, I completely agree with that. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Kevin on Long Island, what's up, Kevin? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. What's happening? Hey, congratulations, Michael, on a great career. Thank you. Um, I'm Wally Serbiak, high school coach. I, I don't know if you remember Mike. I spoke here because he had a terrible. Uh, when he was in senior year, he had a tough uh, game in the in the semis. The dog was killing him, saying he wasn't a good athlete. And I got on, and I guess while his dad had been on before, and while well, it was funny, you were you were great, and, and and dog was killing me about, well, he's not a good athlete. He can't do this, and you were just you were just great, and uh, you know I just want to appreciate it. I drove every day to practice, and for thirty years with you, Mike, and it's. Uh, a pleasure to listen to you, and we're really going to miss you. Well, thank Fantastic. you. Thanks very much. And I, I do remember that with Wally. I really do. I remember, I remember the game, too. Uh, I remember when he had a tough game. Dave and Flatbush, what's up? Wally was a heck of a player, though. What's up, uh, Dave? How you doing, Mike? It's Good. hard to believe that this is going to be my last call since calling you from high school. <laughs> what's happening? Um, it's, it's truly been amazing. Thank you for the years. Thank you. Um, with, with the Mets, I, I, I really don't understand how, how it seems, it's since made off, really, but they operate like a small market team. And will that ever change? I mean, Alderson was brought in, in a sense, because he was a small market guy and, and the major league uh, commissioner felt that he needed to change the way the team was, was operating because they were, they were awful before that. And I think he's done a great job considering. But at this point, I mean, when are they going to start acting like a New York team? And 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 at least at least I'm not saying to the Yankees level, but somewhere near. Um, I'm not sure. And it's hard to say that they'll ever start doing that. I mean, I'm not sure they'll ever get that. As a matter of fact, um, we'll come back. I'm still contemplating the five worst coaches in the last thirty years and the five best coaches in the first. I got a couple of them, but I don't know if you do the worst. You do the worst. You want to be negative now? Why not? We'll do it. Five worst, <laughs> five best. 
Uh, the coat that makes a list. <laughs> yeah, it, it, <laughs> I, I would think he'd be up there. <laughs> he is. He is definitely, definitely there. Here's the mink man. <laughs>